People with heart failure present in a variety of ways. Uh, some people present with little or no symptoms and the heart failure may be detected when they're having tests for other reasons such as before surgery. Other people present with severe sudden onset symptoms such as sudden onset shortness of breath, finding it very difficult to breathe, uh, having difficulty lying flat at night or having to wake up at night short of breath. These people often need to be hospitalised to stabilise their symptoms. However, for the majority of people, they present with sort of slow onset symptoms, of which there's a wide variety, and people present in different ways. Some people present with shortness of breath, such as difficulty walking up the stairs or going up a slight hill, which gradually gets worse over time. Other people might notice they have increased fatigue and find it more difficult to do everyday tasks, such as tidying around the house or working in the garden. Some people notice loss of appetite or ankle swelling as being problems. All these conditions can be caused by a variety of factors and it can be very difficult to separate these out from other conditions which cause these symptoms. And so a variety of tests may be needed to diagnose if this is heart failure or some other problem or indeed a side effect of a medication you're already taking. So as part of the process in diagnosing heart failure, you'll probably attend your general practitioner who will first take a history from you asking about the symptoms that you've had and how long they've lasted for. They then undertake an examination to detect other signs possibly of heart failure or other conditions such as a heart murmur. Following this, they'll undertake a variety of tests. Since people present with a variety of symptoms with heart failure, the tests may vary from one person to the other. However, common tests that are undertaken include an ECG, which is a tracing of the heart, which shows if your heartbeat has been irregular or the signs of damage to the heart. Some people may have a chest x-ray, which shows signs of lung conditions that may be causing your shortness of breath. Other common uh, tests that may be performed are blood tests, such as a blood count to see do you have anemia, Tests of your kidney function or thyroid tests, which may be exacerbating your symptoms. In some areas, your GP may perform a test called natriuretic peptide testing, which is a blood test which detects a protein which is produced by the heart when it is under stress. Uh, this is not available in all areas, but if it is available, it allows your GP to determine if you do have heart failure or do not have heart failure. People with a normal test do not have heart failure. Those with an elevated test may have heart failure and would need to have further testing which is for the testing is carried out in the hospital environment. And the commonest test that is done to confirm the diagnosis is an echocardiogram. This is an ultrasound of the heart and is carried out in a clinic. Um, it involves putting some jelly on the chest and having a probe put in the chest that takes pictures of the heart as it is moving. It's very similar to the test that is done for a woman when she's pregnant to look at her baby. It's painless and only takes around 20 minutes to perform. Following this, the doctor in the hospital can make an assessment of the structure and function of your heart and help confirm the diagnosis of heart failure. If you are found to have heart failure, the hospital specialist will undertake further tests to try and find the cause of your heart failure. Again, there are a variety of these tests, but they include tests such as an angiogram, which is where they inject dye into the arteries in your heart to detect if there are any blockages in the arteries in the heart, or a test such as an MRI, which gives very detailed images of your heart and its function and helps us decide what are the possible causes of your heart failure. When you're diagnosed with heart failure, there may be a number of adjustments made to your medications or new medications started. There are a wide variety of medications used in the treatment of heart failure, and different treatments may be used for different people. And your doctors in the hospital and, and your GP will help individualize that treatment for you. Common medications that are used in treating heart failure include diuretics. These are tablets which help you pass more urine and relieve the congestion from the fluid. Um, other medications that are used are medications called ACE inhibitors, which are medications also used to control blood pressure, or beta blockers are also used to control blood pressure. So newer treatments for the management of your heart failure are also becoming available, and your team in the hospital and general practice will discuss this with you also. All these medications need regular monitoring, and this will be undertaken by both the hospital and your GP. Common tests that are undertaken are checking your blood pressure, your heart rate, monitoring blood tests such as your kidney function, and these will be undertaken on a regular basis to ensure that the medications are not affecting you or interacting with other medications you're taking for other conditions. Your GP will be interested to hear how your symptoms are improving or if there's been any change. Therefore, it's important that you take note of your symptoms and particularly monitor things such as your weight on a daily basis. A gain in weight, particularly if rapid, can be an indication that you're gaining fluid and may need further treatment. Also, it's important to report your GP any symptoms or signs that you notice that have changed as they may not be apparent from just examining you. The other thing to remember is that any new medications that you start, even if over the counter, should be reported to your GP, as they can interact with other medications you're taking. Overall, both you and your family, together with your GP and hospital team, can work together to improve your symptoms and give you a good quality of life.